Hello and welcome to Trading Futures on this Thursday morning. We welcome you to prime time hour when we talk about the futures markets. We'd like to welcome everyone here today. We've got Kevin, Carol, Jack, Sharon, Sim, and many others. We welcome all. We also have Barbara Armstrong with us here today. Pleasure. Welcome. And uh, just let's go ahead and uh, hop right in and get started. Now, remember that Trading Futures, if you go to Schwab.com, there is a course for trading futures, we could show you that as well. If you have not gone through the course, that would be a good idea to do that. That way, when you come to the class, you have some educational foundation of content that you've looked at. Uh, so we talk about trading futures, and it is trading. Now, also remember when we talk about examples here today, they are just that. Also remember that futures and futures options trading involve substantial risk. Futures accounts are not protected by the SIPC. And also remember when we, uh, also talk about examples of uh, or information here that we talk about is provided for informational purposes only uh, some of the examples we talk about here today you might say i'm not going to consider that others you might consider that is up to you we will be using the paid money software application known as the desktop now as we get started here today i want to talk about really three different types of futures we normally practice an equity feature like the dow NASDAQ, S&P, or the Russell. Two weeks ago, we didn't meet last week because last week was July 4th. Uh, two weeks ago, we talked about the NASDAQ future, okay? Did an example there. Also today, uh, we will talk about equity future here today. I wanna look at the Dow, okay, today as one of our equity index future examples. Second, we're gonna talk about, we had a cooler inflation number. Well, I'm not, I mean, how much cooler are we talking about? A tenth of a percent, okay? I want to talk about the effect it actually had on the U.S. dollar and some of the currencies. I would like to look at and practice maybe two different currency trades here today as we're seeing maybe a weakening U.S. dollar perhaps and maybe a strengthening other currencies like what, okay? Now, we also have a Canadian with us here today, Barbara Armstrong. We might look at the Canadian dollar. Let's see if it's worth anything here this morning. <laughs> of course it is. Just the question is how much. Now, we'll also talk about a commodity future, kind of with the reaction with the inflation. How did it affect the dollar? And our commodities moving a little bit. Now, let's bring up just real quick. Uh, so this is kind of like a, a, a viewpoint. And it's really kind of showing. And I, what I did is just put, these are, the, these are the futures that we typically bring up, okay? And I, we have the symbols here. And some of these are not micros. These are the standard contracts, uh, standard futures here. I also put the description here. So if you as a viewer are saying, I, I really don't know what the CL is, I, I tried to kind of space it where you could see that a little bit more so you could follow along, okay? Now, if we look at this, the S&P half point, pretty much at a point par for the day. Crude oil is down just a little bit. NASDAQ is down just a hair. So you kind of more of a flat open there. Dow futures sitting here about 43, okay? Now, the only one we don't see on here is the Russell. We could add that as well. And I think uh, M2K, well, now, by the way, we could type in the Ruddy or the M2K. And what you're gonna see is the Russell is up 45 points. And by the way, that's not a flat open. That open is in the magnitude of 2%. So before we go any further, let me kind of just bring that up for just a sec. Now, when we look across the board here, you're gonna see that what type of trend do we have? It's trend three. What, do we have a potential hold, like we talk about in stocks? Yeah. Do we see a shorter term high? Yeah. Do we see, for example, a crossover on the 10, 20 crossover that X, Okay, let me change that background color so we can see that a little bit better. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that background. It's a green background. I'm just gonna put dark green if I can. And I think that's gonna help you see it a little bit better. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what you're gonna notice is on that 1020, there's a cross and that's happening today. Now, this might be the first time you've seen this. It ain't our first time, okay? The bottom line is that that means that there's a potential cross happening right today, okay? So I want to kind of take a look at the Dow, yes, but I'm also going to look at the Russell as well. 
Now, remember the inflation data dropped a little bit. The expectation has been about a 75% cut coming up, okay, from the Fed. And we know that the smaller caps have really been hit aggressively by the rise of rates. These smaller businesses having to get capital at a bigger, uh, well, more costly amount, and that's really hurting their profits. I want to go to this M2K. Now, some of you don't know this. This is the micro, and it's a tenth scale of the standard product. Now, uh, it, what I'm going to do on this is you tell me what we see. Now, let's think back to what we saw in the market watch. So on the market watch, we saw that it was at a 20-day high. What does that signify? Well, if we go back, let's say 20 or so days, we might be getting out of a little pocket of consolidation, and we see that here today. If we zoom in, we saw on the market watch where it was a crossover today. We might even argue it could have been yesterday, okay? And then if we go back and look at Kohold, it was a Kohold yesterday, but if we're here today, we're even, this would be another Kohold because we're trading above the high of the lowest, most recent red candle, which was here, okay? Now, you're gonna also notice at the very top, we get some idea, and I sent this, this futures label out. Uh, let me send it back to you. So that what I just sent to you is called the futures label. Let's verify, uh, and I'm gonna put that right there, okay? Now, grab that. Yeah, the Russell, so, so Carol, you asked the question before. That's why I'm addressing this now, okay? We saw that, for example, the inflation data was less than feared, it was better, okay? So when we get that inflation data that's less than feared, okay, it might actually, we might get a rate cut, okay? And when you get that potential rate cut, where does the U.S. dollar go? Dollar tends to drop. This morning, we actually saw that the, the U.S. dollar, the index, dropped 73 cents or 7 tenths of 1%. Now, if you're a smaller, smaller business, you need capital, right? And if you, for example, let's say, are able to get capital even for a percent less, 2% less, could that affect your profits? The answer would be most likely yes, if you could get it, okay? So what we're going to do here is we know that this has taken a pretty big pop. We only have 45 minutes to do trades every week. That's it. So the trades have to be placed, okay, in this 45-minute window. Now, we could put, like, conditional orders, uh, bounces, breakouts. We could set up pending orders, but we have to put them in in the 45-minute window. We can't do it any other time in the week, okay? So the first trade that we're going to do is we're going to right-click on this, buy custom. We're going to go with OCO bracket, Okay. Now, we know that the Russell has underperformed the other two as we followed along in other classes. But uh, if we can get a rate cut, if we might see some of those, let's say, smaller cap companies kind of go more in line potentially with maybe where the S&P and the NASDAQ is, et cetera. Now, if we were to put a target right at this, let's say, prior high, that's going to be right at about 21.69. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just put this. Let me make it a little thicker line for us so we can see that. And I want that price level uh, on the right. Okay. So that number that we're, what we're going to set is 2168 as a target. Now, let's go ahead and I'm going to put this in the paper money account. Let's do a short term swing trade. Okay. To the upside. And I'm going to right-click on that chart. We're going to go down to buy custom with the OCO bracket. We said the number that we were looking at before was 2168, which was the prior high, okay? Now, this is going to be a limit order, data GTC, okay? Now, when we did this, which future is it bringing up? Well, the future that it's bringing up is a September 24. Let's verify that this is the one that's the active traded contract, and it is 71 days to expiration. Bid ask spread, we really have in this case about a 10 cent bid ask spread, maybe 20 cents. Okay, 
volume, 35,000 so far. So that's the one we're going to look at. 71 days is plenty, okay? Now what you're going to notice is if I go back to this, we're going to go back to this number, 2168. So this is about 62 points from the target to the entry price, and every point is $5, okay? Now, I like to have a little sheet for this, okay? I'm not going to bring it up here, but if we kind of said, okay, 62 points, 62 times five, okay? 62 is the difference between the entry and the target, and the five is for every point that goes up in our favor, that point is worth $5. So now we have 300, that would be a worth a potential $310 if per contract, if it would go up in our favor. That's the, uh, that's the upside gain. If we talked about the downside, where is that stop? Well, let's go back and look at that. Where might we set that? On a large candle like this, maybe let's kind of use the intraday low and set a stop right below the intraday low. I mean, if we go below today's intraday low on this large candle, that's not a good sign. That's a bad sign. We're going to set that stop like 15 points below the intraday low. So if we put 15 points down, it would be 2047. Okay. Now you might be thinking, James, why didn't you put this trade on earlier? Well, because we got to do all the trades in class. Okay. Now, uh, 2106, 2168. And if we look at the downside, you're going to see that we could say, how many points is it down? You figure it out. It's about 53, about 59 points times that by five. And that's the potential loss. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do only one contract in the margin account. Okay, so confirm and send. Note the commission here. Okay, the commission on a one contract basis is 225. We're going long. So when we say long, that means that we're a buyer. Okay, and we're trying to buy at 2106.40. As we talked, prices moved up a little bit. We might not get filled right away. We won't. Okay, unless it really, really the price comes down. We'll give this about two minutes to see if that or see if the price can come down just a little smidge. Now we're right now at it, okay? We're about two points above where that buy limit is. The buy limit is saying at that price or less, come on, come on down. This is usually when we say, come on down. So let's kind of give it a, a point, uh, give it a minute or two to see if it can drop, okay? Now I wanna kind of go back to something just real quick, which is let's say, the effect of the, infl the cooler inflation had on the US dollar. Now, which, when we kind of talk about this, okay, what other index could benefit from the fall in the US dollar? What other index? I mean, we could even maybe say all of them, but is there one index where there may be, let's say, not just domestic companies, but international companies. If they can, for example, have a US dollar that could be lower, could that benefit the sales of those multinational companies? Meaning they don't just sell here domestically, they sell abroad. Well, this morning we actually saw that the US dollar actually fell down to that kind of the bottom of the range, didn't break it, but it fell down near there. One of the other trades that we're gonna do here today is we're gonna take a look at the, 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 the Dow, okay? And I wanna take a look at the Dow. Now, if we brought up the forward slash MYM, that's the micro for the Dow. Now, some of you, if I were to ask you a question like, hey, if you wanted to uh, buy a product that tracks the Dow index, how much is it per share? Well, if you got uh, $397 a share or $400 a share, you could go out and buy it if you would consider that. Many people say, man, I, I don't have $400 a share. Well, one of the reasons why some people consider futures is if they want to get exposure to an index, it could be a lot less than $400 a share, okay? Now, we're choosing the micro, okay? And now what you're gonna notice is the tick size, we know that the Dow moves in one point increments. For every one point it moves, 
it's 50 cents. And if we were to, let's say, fall down, let's say, 100 points, well, it would be down $50. If we fell down 100, if we did the math, if it went up 100 points, it would be worth $50. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to kind of talk about, tell me what you see on this price graph. Do you see anything that might be setting up a continuation pattern? Barb, you're not allowed to answer. So if we take a look at this, okay, we kind of see that we went down, came back up, there's a U pattern. We dropped down, came back up, dropped down, came back up. That low right there, okay, that low right there, slightly higher than here. I think the evidence on the chart that we might just be not really paying attention to is how come the recent price data has not come back down to the prior lows? How come these intraday wicks are all in the same area of 39.50. Are there some investors who are thinking, hey, if we go down to 39.50, buy. Goes down to 39.50, buy. Go down to 39.50, buy. Are we making a higher level support? How long do you have to have that for? Well, if we get, let's say, a week or two of that happening, we could be making a higher level support. I think what we've seen on this chart is there's been multiple, multiple points of two weeks where 39,500 has really become the new support area. You go back to really the, the price candle from yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's a bullish engulfing candle. That's go hold. We actually see this right here, almost crossing back over to the upside. People say, well, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. Well, I don't know why you are late if you are, okay? Not with the tools we have, we should be late. Why? Not? Why? Now, if we take a look at this, and we're going to write, now, by the way, I want to go to the daily chart, then to the weekly. And if we look at this weekly, then tell me what you see, okay? So if we go back to this, the evidence that we see on the chart that people sometimes dismiss is we see this big run to the upside. There's your pull. Now, some people would say the market can't go up by any higher. You know, it's already up high. Look, to all that, okay? Just because it's high doesn't mean it can't go higher. Just because it's low, it doesn't mean it can't go lower. If we go back and really take a look at this, we kind of really have where we've held a high percent of this rally. If this was zero and this is 100, let's say that we gave back 25% of the rally that we had, okay? And if we look at this, could we be saying, that's a touch, that's a touch? Guys and gals, that's, that's a double bottom. Okay, now on the right hand side, this is where we're kind of coming back to the midpoint of the channel and we haven't come down to the bottom. Why? Some investors might think that this might be having a greater chance to break out now. Second trade that we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna go long the Dow futures. Now we're gonna right click on the chart. Okay, so I'm gonna right click on this chart and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull out that Dow future. Okay, and if I pull out that Dow future, forward slash MYM. Now, we normally will trade the micros, okay? We choose the micros because for someone who's learning about futures, this might be a more potential suitable product for some investors who are learning, okay? If you say, I've done these before, I wanna trade the bigger contract, that investor might choose the YM, which obviously is 10 times uh, what we're talking about. We're gonna go to buy custom with OCO bracket, okay? So not too bad. All we did is right click on the chart. Second thing we're gonna do, we like to talk about the risk first. That consolidation area is right about 39,419. Now there is no, I've never seen anyone back test, okay, how low below that support. It's usually how much lower are you willing to let it go, okay? So let's throw a number out of 39,000, okay, 200. And so if we, now that, that support level was right about 39,457. And I'm just throwing out a number of, let's say 49,200. And if we go below there, we could be sitting at, that means that we're now down below all those intraday lows that we've had over the last two weeks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go change that data GTC. Now, remember how the stop works. Does the stop guarantee anything? No, it triggers the sell, but we don't know what it's gonna get filled at, okay? 
We don't know if it's going to get filled, okay? But that's the trigger to sell it. Now, when we talk about the target, calling all technicians, okay? If we were to look at this and say, hey, if I were to ask all technicians, where do you see a potential price target? Now, you know that in our classes, we always talk about, we talked about yesterday. Does the stock have a recent high? Yes. Does the stock actually have a prior run into that high? That's what we call it, number two. Yes. Do we have like a U pattern on the chart? Yeah. Okay, three. Okay, that U pattern really number three. Now, if we kind of said, do we have maybe even like a U pattern and or a little cup and handle pattern? Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's kind of remember, now remember, I only count to three, okay? Do we, have a, do we have a prior high? Yes. Before we made that high, did we have a run up into that high? Yes. After that, do we have like a U pattern? Now, if you had a cup and handle pattern, that's we would also think of that as a continuation pattern. We might also say like a U pattern, a cup and handle pattern, or we could also say sometimes maybe like a V pattern or a W pattern. All of these tend to be something that tend to be cons uh, continuation patterns. It could also mean reversal, okay, to the upside, especially W patterns. We know that. Now, what we're going to do is, what's the price target? Well, if I kind of look at this recent low, let's say 38.2, okay, 38,200. If we kind of said the top, where is that top? Let's say 41,100. So we're now looking at the distance between these two levels and saying, how much is that? Well, it's going to be about 900 points, okay? Now, if we take a look at this, if we add 900 points to the top, this would really put us at, now why did I say 41.4? I need to say, uh, let's take that out, 40,100. So this would get us to a price projection, and that's what it is at 41,000. Okay, so here we go. Now, what I'm gonna do is, let's kind of take that off. Let's, before we forget, we're gonna put that 41,000 right there. Now, you can do the math, right? We can look and see how many points is that, times that by the tick value. Now, I'm gonna see if on this computer, I know I got a calculator here. Let me pull this calculator up. So if we were saying, you know, James, I think this could go up 950 points and every one point is 50 cents. Well, that upside potential per contract is $475. Now, if we go from 40,053 down to there, that's like 850 points, but it's negative. Well, if that's the case, it would be same thing, point, $425 loss. So we tend to have more like one-to-one -one reward risk ratios at a minimum. We tend to also be a little bit more generous in terms of the stop to try to let the trend play itself out. Now, that price is moving as we've talked. Daggummit. Okay, need to close the blinds here. Other people might be watching. I'm joking. Now, what you're going to see is our entry is 40053 It's 70 points higher. As we talked, that was $35 gone. Okay? Now, I'm going to put this right here. And I'm going to send it. And if we don't get filled in about two to three minutes, we are going to look and see uh, if that can get filled. Okay. If it does not, we'll adjust. Now, let's go back to the Russell for just a moment. Russell. Okay. And did it fill? The answer is no. Where was our order? It was 2106. We're at 2118. So this is kind of sometimes what can happen is if we're not watching these in maybe the first two to three minutes, if that really takes off, we kind of miss it. I'm going to move up the order to where it is right now, okay, and see if it can fill, okay? Now, that order is right there, okay, and I'm going to go back. Now, I'm just going to make sure where are we. Now, sometimes we like to even go from the daily chart to maybe like a five-day, 15-minute. Why? That way I can see where the price is, okay? And there, what you're going to notice is that was that pretty hard push. 
6.30 was really when the economic data on inflation came out. So the biggest thing what you have to really remember here is, look, a lot of people say I don't look at uh, economic data. They might not be that experienced in investing. Economic data affects not only equity indexes, it affects individual company sales projections, which then affect fundamentals, which then affects potentially technicals. The, it does matter. Someone might not understand it, but it does matter. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to, for example, that Dow, just real quick. Where are we on the Dow? Uh, if we go back to the Dow, we're pretty daggum close, 40, 53. We're about 25 points off now. Now, just for the sake of time, because I want to kind of change the topic, I want to move to this right here, and I'm just going to kind of move it up. Now, the nice thing about this platform is with these futures, we can just kind of adjust the prices right on the price graph, okay? And we can see where the stop is. We can see where the target is right on the price graph. Doesn't get much more easier than this, okay? Now, if we take a look at this, okay? So the trade number one that we did here today was what? Number one is we went long the Russell. What was the thesis of really going long the Russell? Cooler inflation, which could then affect actually the increasing chances the Fed could cut interest rates. Which companies could potentially benefit from that cut in interest rates? We might submit smaller cap companies. When we say smaller cap companies, we're talking about smaller businesses that have been maybe choked, okay, financially choked by the rise in rates that have been very aggressive. And sometimes when you have that, you can get into like a credit crunch where maybe banks might be more uh, scrupulous as far as which companies or are they willing to lend. So well, that's why we're kind of favoring the Russell. When we saw the US dollar drop here today, the other thing is if that dollar drops and was able to break support, could you get these multinational companies to uh, have higher potential sales? Now, you might think, well, that's just insane, but I want to kind of remind you something that we've seen lately, okay? Now, one of the currencies that we've been watching is the Japanese yen. We talked about this two weeks ago, okay? This is the Japanese yen. We're not going to do a trade on this, but I want to show you this. Notice when the Japanese yen was dropping down, notice what their equity, uh, what their equity market did. The yen down. Because if the yen is cheaper, that means us as foreigners can buy more Japanese products for less. If we, as export, as we as, for example, foreigners buy all over the globe, buy more and more of their products, what does it do to the revenues of their companies on their indexes, the Nikkei market? You can see it there. So don't think that currencies don't matter to stocks either. It does. What's the prices? The prices for those products are in the local currency. OK, now let's kind of go back to uh, we we talked about, let's say, the U.S. dollar maybe dropping down. What other example might get affected by the U.S. dropping down? Let's put our heads together. What other future might benefit from, let's say, the fall in the U.S. dollar? Let's also get some help and actually kind of go back to the market watch and let's just kind of take a look at the list. Now, if I look at this list, things that we would be looking for is like, what type of trends do we have, okay? Trend three. Trend three is telling us, do we have a stock above its 10-day moving average and its 30-period moving average? There's a lot of things that have that. Now, if I went back to this, we would say, hold is a bullish bounce, okay, fine. We could also be looking for things that are hitting 20-day highs and 55-day highs. 20-day high would be like a one-month high. 55 days would be like an intermediate high, okay? Well, one of the things that we saw in last night, right before I went to bed, I said, hmm, teaching futures tomorrow, what might be an interesting setup? And it, I'm telling you, I mean, it wasn't hard to see the setup in gold. Bad thing is we didn't have the class last night at 8 o'clock, okay? Now, we see that gold here today, 24.13. And it's up 33 points. Now, I want to go back to a chart 
that some of you mentioned yesterday. We saw a company called NEM. Does anybody watch this? Okay. NEM, we're talking about a gold company. This gold company that we actually saw, a prior high, fall down in price, run up in the price, pull back down to the upward trending moving average. Run back up in the price, pull back, flag, bounce, and then boom. Okay. Now, the question we have here is does gold stocks lead gold prices? Or is it gold prices that lead gold companies? That's for you to decide, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up MGC. I want you to tell me what type of price pattern that you see on this price graph. Now, what I'm gonna do is if we take a look at this, we've had a series of little run-ups in price and then a pullback. There's one. We've had a run-up in the price and then a pullback, okay? We've had a run up in the price, and then over time we've had pullback, pullback, pullback. Most of these touches have been right around 2,300. Now, do, are we thinking that maybe we're starting to get to the point where it could be starting to really break out here? Well, if we draw a line down, okay, touch there, high, lower high, lower high, this for some technicians, they might say, James, this kind of appears to be a diagonal resistance breakout. Now, wait, this is blowing my mind. You're literally showing exactly what we do with stock investing. That is correct. Surprise. Okay. So that's what's kind of interesting. We could take what we do with stocks and derivatives and apply it to futures, uh, whether it's equity futures, commodity futures, interest rate futures, or even currency futures. And we're doing the same thing. Okay, that's what's kind of interesting. So if we take a look at this, there's your diagonal breakout. And if we look at this, the crossover was about four days ago. And if we take a look at, let's say, where that little green dot is, which happened today, doink. Okay, and you're going to see that it's there's your local hole. Now, I want to go back to kind of where this was, let's say, last night. The reason why I kind of said last night, it was just kind of sitting right closer, okay, to that moving average. Some people like that. They like to see it close. Now, overnight, some foreigners, et cetera, they bought on that dip. Those people in Asia, those people in Europe, they bought that ahead of the New York session. Well, thanks a lot. Us, domestically, we got to sleep, okay? At least some people do. Now, what you're going to notice is we're going to right-click on the chart, buy custom, and we're going to go with OCO bracket. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this prior high, Okay, and remember, one, two, three, prior high. Did we have a run up into that high? Two, do we have a U pattern, V pattern, cup, uh, cup and handle pattern, W pattern, V pattern? Do you have any of that? And the, the fact of the matter is we kind of have more like a prolonged V uh, U pattern where we've based over time right around 2300. This marker, okay, 2507, okay? Now, if you take a look at this, that 2507, we marked that from the prior high down to consolidation. And notice what you're going to take a look at is that's going to be the target that we set. Now, we know that the, the fluctuation of movement is in a dime increment, okay, 10 cents. How many 10 cents are in, in a point? Well, we know there's 10 of them, okay? So if we move 10 cents, that 10 cents is worth $1. If we moved one full point, as you could do the math, it's worth 10 bucks. So man, if we were like last night when we were just sitting there uh, watching kind of right on Thinkorswim Mobile, some of the setups that we were seeing, that could have been 300 bucks, okay? Now some people say, oh, they're really too busy. You shouldn't always look at markets. You know, you can do whatever you want, free country, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to this. We're gonna right click on the chart, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up that trade, okay? And we're gonna put the target at the 161 fib and the stop underneath today's low, which is right at the moving averages, okay? Right click, buy custom with OCO bracket. Now let me redraw this for just a minute where that was. And I'll just kinda, of, if you're saying, how did you draw that? We went to the prior high that area of resistance, okay? And if we drop down kind of that base, where was that potential target? 
2507. Here we go. Now I'm going to put the target, let's bring up that order, right click, buy custom with OCO bracket. Now, if we put in that target 2507, now if we put it at 2507, that's like perfect. I'm going to put 2504 because we might be wrong by a couple points, okay? Data GTC. Now, in terms of the stop, what we're going to do is we're going to set the stop underneath today's low. What was today's low? Well, today's low is 2377. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set that low 15 points below that, 2377, 2362, okay? And that 2362, we'll put that right there. So we can look and see the distance from there to there is about 50 points, okay? And what is a one, what's one point worth? Answer, 10 bucks. And so you could do the math, okay? If we go from there to there, how many points is that? Times $10 a point, okay? Now, I'm gonna go to questions here in just a sec. But if we take a look at this, GTC, GTC. Now, one thing I'm gonna bring up here, and I'm just gonna stop right here. If gold is moving, what other futures probably moving as well? If gold is moving, what tends to have a good correlation to gold, okay? Now, Nitin says, could I get the setup script scan that James is showing in the Market Watch tab? Uh, so any of those scripts that we actually have, we we just put those right on my X page, okay? Now, Barbara has an X page as well, and she also updated some of the scripts she uses yesterday as well. So if I scroll down, if you said, hey, I would be interested in some of those scripts that you have, where could I see those? Just right at the very top of my page, okay? You're going to see that right here. If you said, I, I would like that 20-day high, it's right there. I like that 55-day high, it's right there, okay? James, I would really like kind of that uh, hold as well. It's right there, okay? It's right, right there, okay? Now, here's the thing. You do not have to be active on X, okay? No one's asking you to get uh, 17,000 subscribers or whatever or followers. You just might be looking at it for information. I'm going to tell you this. I used to think X was a waste of time. What I learned is X, there's a lot of people that post some great information. Liz Ann Saunders of Charles Schwab posts a lot of great information. And it's a way that people share information, okay? And, and some, of, some people are at different levels of investing. So I would say if you're not on X, take a look at it because Barbara and myself, we share some things on there that are educational in nature that could be valuable in terms of a learning, okay? So take a look at that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that uh, order right here. We're gonna send it. Note the commission, check, send the order. Now, I wanna kinda, that question that I ask, which is what commodity also might move, let's say, with gold? Silver, okay? And if we look at silver, we have a double top prior high. We have a rally up into that high. We have like another U pattern on the chart. And what we see in this case is, could that be set up for extension again? Now, I don't wanna go here. If we had a little bit more time, yes, okay? But what I wanna do is I wanna take about the last five minutes and really bring up uh, example given. Uh, a chart that I want to actually take a look at. Now, if we get the, now think about a teeter totter, okay? So let's take our last trade here and let's kind of think together, okay? Now we know the US dollar is not the only currency out there, okay? If the US dollar goes down, think a teeter totter, okay? If one side of the teeter totter goes down, another currency or currencies could go up, okay? Now, what other currencies are some major currencies? Well, when I say major, I'm not talking about the Iraqi dinar here, okay? It, we would be saying the Euro, the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, and so on, Swiss franc, British pound. That's what I mean by major currencies. Well, one of the biggest moves in currencies we saw here tonight was really the British pound, okay? So if the US dollar drops, which currency could offset that? Well, if we look by percentage wise, you see that we had a pretty good jump in the British pound. We had a decent jump in the Australian dollar. 
We had a pretty strong bounce in the Swiss franc and decent on the euro. Now, if I said of these four, and, and no pun intended for the Canadian dollar, Barb, but it didn't move as much as the other four I'm talking about, at least right now. Now, if we said, are any of these showing maybe a little breakout? The British, uh, the, the British pound, that's showing a 20-day high and a 55-day high. The Australian dollar, that is actually showing the 20-day breakout and 55. Both of those have could hold. I want to turn our attention here to just real quick. Uh, <laughs> Barb, she's, Barb just called me a buttercup and everyone saw that. <laughs> I'm so glad that that showed right there. Now I can have proof. She called me a buttercup. Now, <laughs> uh, busted, Barb. Now, so here it is. So when we look at, let's say, the British pound, what I want you to notice here is this might be confusing when you look at this. So we know that when we look at, let's say, currencies we're talking about in pennies, et cetera, this moves in fraction of pennies called a pip. That fraction of a penny has a value of 63 cents per pip, okay? So when we take a look at this, I'm gonna kind of just kind of use a sample uh, sheet of paper that we could actually look at, okay? So let's say the investor said, you know what, James? We're at 129.37. We're about four tenths past 129, okay? There's 100 pips in one penny, okay? So that's what that 3.7 is. Now what I'm gonna do is let's bring up a little sheet of paper. I'm gonna type in 129.37, okay? Now if we looked at this and said, look, I think support is kind of in this area. If I said, hey, the old breakout level I see is right about 129.04, okay? So I'm gonna type in 129.04. Now let me verify that. 129 is it one it's 128 i felt like something was wrong there correct okay now the question becomes how much lower do you want the stop set now i'm going to take 127 and a half so if i said 127 and a half you know here's 27 here's 28 that just means we're a half penny in between 127 and 128 now what you're going to notice is if we get in there and we set a stop here that is almost, okay, two pennies, okay? It's almost two pennies from there to there. You can think of this as 187 pips, okay? Or 1.87 cents, okay? Now, if we take a look at this, how much is, it, when we kind of take a look at, let's say the tick value, that tick value, how much is that one pip worth? Answer, 63 cents. We put that right there. So if we went down 187 of them, and every pip, let's say, is worth, let's say, 63 cents, what is the potential loss here? And we could do that math there, okay? So if I take, for example, 187 times 63, that potential loss is gonna be about $117.81. Now, here's the kind of nice thing about this. So if we drop 187 pips, 1.87 cents, every pip is worth 63 cents. The potential loss per contract is 117 bucks. Now, if I said the target here is 131.50, where do we get that? Well, if we go back to that, that might be like a prior high on the chart. That prior high on the chart is gonna be right about right there. And if I put that right at 131.50, that means that from the entry price to the target, that's a little over two cents or 213 pips, yep, yeah, 213 pips or 2.13 cents. Now, if I said, hey, 213 pips times 63 cents, the potential gain per contract is $134. Now, let's put this in, okay? Now, some of you might say, James, I've never traded currency. Well, not now. We're gonna go ahead and bring this up. We need to bring it up quickly so we can end on time. M6B, we're gonna right click on the chart, buy custom just like we would normally. We're gonna put the target at 131.50. 
And that stop we made mention of is at the price of 127.50. Now, let me just bring that back up, 127.50, and I'm going to hold this screen, okay? Data GTC, data GTC. Now, your homework is I would like you to practice one equity index, okay, F equity future. I would like you to practice, practice trading the gold product in paper money, and I would like you to practice one currency, okay, and a major currency like the pound, euro, et cetera, okay? So this will be our final trade here, looking for the British pound to appreciate. Now, if the British pound goes up, that means the US dollar could go lower, okay? So I gave you a homework assignment with three practice examples in paper money. Make sure that you go out and do that. Now, remember, this class is not a one-off basis. We do this class every week. We also have a playlist for our class. There it is. Now, I also wanna give you a reminder that coming up right at the top of the hour, Ben Watson will be doing a class on long verticals and diagonals. Stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed to the Trader Talk channel, do so. That way you can get all of our content. And I want to give us a quick reminder that when we talk about futures today, futures, like any product, has risk. Be aware of that risk. Paper trade to see what that risk is for yourself and if it's something you would consider. Thank you, Barb, and thanks to all of you. Stay tuned for Ben coming up next. Take care. Bye-bye.